When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. I had the, the, the great pleasure of sitting next to Johnny, uh, c commentating football for a long time at SBS and going to grounds where there was a thousand people, fifteen hundred, two thousand troubles, issues and whatnot, but to, to think that 10 years since he left us, the A-League is booming, the FFA Cup is a phenomenal competition, the Socceroos have qualified for three World Cups, forget about their standings now, and we continue to export players. Um, yeah, I mean, who's to say we don't reach the pinnacle of World Cup football, but I think our game is showing the other sports. We're here, we're making a statement, and we're going to take over. The last 50 years since we've been, since Australia's been part of FIFA, there's been so many people that have, you know, just devoted their life to the game, shown so, uh, shown so much passion for it. And um, what what I'd like, what I think he'd like to see is those people uh, recognised, the history of the game recognised over the next 10 years. And I think he would like um, the governors of the game, and in fact everybody involved with the game to keep on dreaming, to keep on raising the bar, to keep on exceeding their, their expectations, um, to make the game um, and the people in the game the best they can be. And, you know, just keep on, just keep on winning, have a winning mentality. I can honestly say every time I played a game with John I thoroughly enjoyed it because you knew that Johnny as captain was going to set the example, uh, he was going to lead by example, uh, not, not only you know giving 110% effort but also being a very skillful and quality player, he was someone that you'd want to have in the trenches with you and, uh, and it was always a joy to play with Johnny so you know there's not one particular moment that stands out, I just think every time we pull on that green and gold jersey uh, it was very exciting. The streets have no name, I have no shame Cause all my energy is one with the universal game I've got parrot on the float, in the suburbs I will go Cause I know deep in my soul that I love the world game Down in Japan, Yoshi is the biggest fan She has from Yokohama and believes in soccer karma She ditched the Tamagotchi for a hunky Hidetoshi Nakata cause she knows that she loves the world game
He told me a story, I think it was when he was in Italy, that every, um, every afternoon after a game they'd go and get their hair cut at the hairdressers because the women wore really, really short skirts and had, they were dropping their scissors all the time. So, um, so <laughs> they're the sorts of pranks. But, but those sorts of pranks were just like Pa, which is Uncle, you know, Dad, um, his dad. Yeah, he, Pa always had something funny to say and um, was always playing jokes on people and that sort of thing. So I think that was probably one of Pa's qualities that Uncle John had. One of the games we played at uh, Greece, in Greece, we were on a world tour and we just kicked off and uh, Johnny broke away, passed the ball inside to me, which was a great ball and I ended up volleying it and it was about a minute, first minute in the game and I scored into the top scorer and, and Johnny took all the limelight saying it was the best pass in history or something like that. Oh, nice. <laughs> He played golf like hit the ball, chase it, hit the ball, chase it. And I said, John, we're not playing football, we're playing golf. It's no different. Somebody would get in front of us on the next tee, he said, nah, they're slow. So we go on to the next tee. Then the next tee, we never, I think, in the five or ten years I played with him down here, ever played one through nine in one straight go. Amazing. Did, did you ever cover off the nine at all? Uh, probably not, no. <laughs> What was Uncle John like as a kid growing up? He was a mischief. He was m mischievous, um, wanted to be the best, um, and yeah, he wanted to be the best. He was. He was. It didn't matter what what he took on. He whether it be marbles or or uh, in those days he used to shot cigarette packets up against empty ones up against the, the wall and, that, and uh, he, if he lost in that he used to get real cheese off. As a human being very humble. I've done, in my 32 years in the media, I've done 30, uh, 66 big interviews from Pele, Beckenbauer, Dennis Law, Bobby Charlton, uh, Capella, I can't name them all, uh, Trapattoni, uh, Sir Bobby Robson, Alan Shearer was the last one. It took me more than 20 years to realise, other than being superstars, they all had one thing in common, other than Maradona. They were extremely humble human beings. John had it. John was the same. Even more humble than most of the others. When John was uh, diagnosed with cancer, um, uh, we spent, after he'd been to the MD Anderson Clinic in the States and, and had a second opinion, and come back to Australia for his treatment at, the, at Prince Alfred at the Sydney Cancer Centre. We got to spend a lot of time together, um, walking uh, around Kiama uh, first thing in the morning, our exercise, exercise regime, because when he was first diagnosed, he was very, very ill. He, was, he couldn't walk 20 metres without having to stop because he was, he was just so puffed. And um, uh, we spent every morning together um, we, we'd drive into Kiama, uh, we'd walk five kilometres and we'd, we'd go to the gym for 20 minutes, we'd come home, have a fresh, fresh juice um, and a green tea and um, during that time, um, uh, you know, over the period of month after month, he'd have a, an x-ray and a scan on his, on his uh, cancer and month by month the cancer, the cancer cells were reducing. Um, and um, you know, after a while, he was given the all clear. So that time that we were able to spend together working on his health is probably, um, you know, my uh, most treasured time that I was able to spend with him. As a student, he was a silent achiever. As a sportsman, the same. Um, 
he, he never bragged, he had zero ego, but super uh, talented. And what, answering that question with a, a couple of answers, he was an incredible sportsman other than soccer, and he was a better cricketer than a soccer player. And if he hadn't given cricket, cricket away, I have no doubts he would have been captain of Australia in 1972 instead of Ian Chappell. And the reason for that was, is, he was um, a defiant batsman, very similar to Steve Waugh, another famous test captain. Uh, he, was, uh, he had an unplayable uh, right wrist uh, leg spinning uh, balls and he was a medium pacer, mainly an off cutter. And he still holds the batting averages for Cleveland Street 69. That's his batting average after more than 50 years. As a student, I'll just give you one example. The last year of high school, doing the leaving certificate, we had a very tough examination, an external examination for accountancy. And we're all in the hall, silence, we had three hours to finish the papers, and he was two rows in front of me. And I noticed he packed up his bags and left, finished two and a half hours before me. And I, I, my blood went cold. I thought, God, he stumbled. He went outside, finished, and I finished right on the dot, three, three, uh, three hours right on the dot. He finished two and a half hours. But when the results came out, thankfully, I got an A. Couldn't get higher than an A, but so did Johnny Warren. <laughs> One of his sayings was that I, uh, we don't want to be the best and the biggest sport in, in Australia. But all we want is a fair go, and that's what's happening. It's happening with the A, a League the way it is, uh, and it's happening in the media. You would, I mean, we, we never get as much publicity as rugby league for, for what reason I'm bloody if I know. But, but uh, you know, whether it be racing, cricket. Uh, Aussie rules and uh, and uh, rugby, you know, I, I think we get more and more more publicity now than we've ever got, and uh, and I think that's uh, helping the game to be pushed, not pushed into people, but letting people realise just what a great game it is.